In a recent video, I showed you how you could use your RV's fuse panel to troubleshoot DC wiring shorts. In that video, I used two custom-built detectors. In this video, I'll show you how to build them. I'll provide a link here to my webpage for further information, parts sources, and building instructions for the detectors. You must purchase all of the components piece by piece to build this. This is not available as a kit. But all you have to do is follow the instructions on the website and you'll know what to buy. So I encourage you to watch the troubleshooting DC shorts video I linked to at the beginning of this video for further details on how to use both of these detectors. Each detector can be built for less than $10. In fact, since the circuit board supplier sends three circuit boards, you can build three of them for not much more. This is a surface mount project. If you have no experience in soldering surface mount, this is an easy way to learn. We will begin with the buzzer board. So we'll start on the back of the board and we will start with diodes. And these diodes are round, so be careful because they could slide off your desktop. When we do the diodes, pay attention that there is a thicker line here on the left side of this little pad right here. And also on the diode, there is a black stripe. The black stripe goes in the same direction as the thick line. And the easiest way that I found to do surface mount is to wet one side first of the circuit pad. Then using a pair of tweezers, reheat the pad and place the component on the pad. And once that is done, I like to take my fingernail and press down and just hit it real quickly again. And if you do it fast enough, you won't get burnt. But I'll tell you, you will get burnt if you leave your finger on too long. And we can do that for the four diodes we have on the board. Again, paying attention to the black stripe on the diode and the white stripe on the board. And once we have one side tacked down, we can come back and hit the other side. And just make sure you get solder on both the component and the board. And we need to flip the board over to do the other side. Now we have another diode, and it's called a Zener diode. This is normally how they come in a little strip like this. There's just a piece of clear plastic that covers each part, and you just try to peel back one at a time if you can. And again, we want to pay attention to the white stripe here and the black stripe on the diode. In the Zener diode, you really can't tell the difference between that and the other ones. They all look the same. So keep them separate in the packages when you receive them. And the last two small components that we have are an LED and a resistor. This LED, if you flip it over, will have an arrow on the underside. And that arrow points in the same direction as this arrow. And this may be a little hard to see because there's two lines with an arrow, but that arrow is pointing that way. And we'll use the same technique. And the resistor is the last small component. It is not polarity sensitive, so you can put this resistor either way. Then we have to put the poly fuse on. And this is an automatic resettable fuse. And if the fuse blows, it'll stay blown until you turn the power off and then it'll reset. The next item is the buzzer. And you can pull this piece of paper off. And this is polarity sensitive. There will be a plus on one side and then the longer lead is also positive. And there's two ways you can install this. You can install it through hole like that. Or what I like to do is to put it in and center on the end. Again, turn the board over and do the other side. And the last components are the keystone terminal tabs. These can go on either side of the board, but they should go on the same side of the board. So the board is just about done. What we want to do next is take a piece of heat shrink and we're using transparent heat shrink because we want to see that LED. And there we go, we're done. This board is for the incandescent light and all this does is, is provide a set of terminals and the fuse. And so now we have our two detector boards done. This one is just simply a method of putting the fuse in line with the light bulb. And of course, this is a buzzer board. So imagine one day you lose functionality of something in your RV and you go to the fuse panel and you see that you have a blown fuse. So what do you do? 
Well, the natural tendency is to replace the fuse, and people do that over and over and over again. The danger is, if there is something drastically wrong, each time you replace a fuse, you run the risk of increasing the damage all that much more. So that's where this detector comes in. Simply remove the bad fuse, install the buzzer detector. The buzzer detector is showing red, which means that it is showing some current flow, but the buzzer itself is not on. That means that the likelihood of it being a short is probably nil. It's probably just a bad fuse, maybe from a surge or for whatever reason the fuse blew. You can probably go ahead and replace the fuse. And I'm using this resistance box to mimic a short. So let's give us a near dead short, 10 ohms. Now, if you put the buzzer in, you know that you have a short and you should not replace a fuse until you figure out why that buzzer is going off. And in fact, until you can get that buzzer to stop, you should not replace the fuse. And here's an example of the advantage that this provides. The other one is just this light bulb and all it does is detect current flow. So the brightness of this bulb is proportional to how much current flow you have. Not as easy to use as the fuse detector, but it's an option.